this screen is huge and trust me big as a normal 400 dollars msle printer why is that well the secret is this screen i got this from a samsung tablet what is this looks like a bomb right and by the way it comes with a library with a bunch of examples this is the electronics workshop right now there's a lot of noise here because i'm printing the parts for the prototype they have like an id tag and the coolest update will be here in the studio they have better magnet better coil and better membrane hey guys welcome to another workshop update the series that most of you guys enjoy so i hope that you learned something new let's get started Hey guys, welcome to another update. Now, remember my prototype of a DLP printer, DLP MSLA printer? Look how tiny the screen is, can you see it? Now, what about this screen? It's huge and trust me, this will cost like 60 or 70 bucks. I'm making a homemade MSLA printer for 60 bucks. Now, I'll make an update video about that in just uh, one week maybe next week you will see it and then the final prototype as you can see i'm building the plate here let me show you let me show you so guys this is not a proper update i will make a video in just one week posting everything about this project and then how the project is and share it open source so everyone could make it and yeah trust me believe it or not this will cost like 60 or maybe 70 dollars and it will be big as a normal 400 dollars msle printer why is that well the secret is this screen I got this from a Samsung tablet, which I bought from second hand for $20. And that's the secret. Nowadays, people are changing their smartphones and tablets each year, and they sell the, the three or four years old tablets for almost nothing. And I bought it for $20 and it works. And for example, instead of making my own array, which costs like $10 and you have to solve it, I found this UV light lantern for only $6. This is 200 watts, just add a relay. 60 cents for a relay and with six dollars you have your light for control and 20 dollars for the screen the rest are just the stepper motor and the stepper driver so yeah the secret is how to control with the esp32 uh, and an sd card picture for 3d files how to control the screen i will tell you that in my video but yeah stay tuned for that this will be very very interesting there's a lot of noise here because i'm printing the parts for the prototype and once i have it it will be shared for free, the code, the part, everything that you need to make one yourself. And if you also have a tablet, it will be even cheaper, maybe $40. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is the size of the screen that I'm using. As you can see, it's the same size as my printer, the MSLE printer that I have from Elegoo. And this cost me $450. So yeah, imagine having a 3D printed body with some very cheap components and not the same quality because this is 8K but this will be 2000 pixels, so a pretty decent quality and a 10 inch display. Pretty cool. Please stay tuned for, for the project. By the way, I also bought phones from Wallapop or any other second app uh, platform. And this, for example, cost, cost me only $10, just because as you can see here, it has like a magnetic issue, maybe a magnet was placed here. So the screen has an error and I buy these, mo these smartphones because I use them for other projects. For example, the 4K projector, I will make it with a smartphone because you can buy it for like $30 and it has a 4K screen. So yeah, using secondhand devices, it's a great way to give life to the products once again. So yeah, maybe you should check them out and make a very cheap project. And this is the Blender project. <laughs> Only just look at how many parts because each time that I'm designing something, I placed the old version here, then the second version, third version, fourth version, and now I'm working at this part here because sometimes I make a mistake and I make a mistake and I like to go back. So for example, if this one has a mistake, I go to the previous model. But look how many parts it has. This will be the main case. And I still have to design the part of the UV light, but yeah, it will be quite cool. This is the electronics workshop right now. As always a mess. I have this part uh, organized and arranged just one day a week. I do it once and then when I start the project I have some parts there, some components here, boxes on the floor. I wish I would have this uh, organized each day but I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. No one has time for that. <laughs> I like it, that, that song. 
Just wanted to show you how it is because it's getting upgraded each week. Now this won't be here. I want to make an entire wall of this. As I've told you, I bought four more uh, organizers like this one and I will make components here. This will be the soldering area. I will have my scope recording area with the vinyl that I've added and here the hardware area. And yeah, this is, oh, almost felt. I also have here these uh, boxes, which I'm starting to fill. All these ones are empty, but kind of useful to have them there. And probably one of the coolest updates, let me just close the door here because the sound of the printers, it's amazing. Yeah, and the coolest update will be here in the studio. The podcast, podcast is almost uh, ready. I have now a carpet on the floor. I have my new light. I have these uh, sponges on the wall. This will be soundproofing. As you can see, the sound is a lot different here. And all I have to do is to install the mics. I'll have a friend here and start talking in my podcast. Now, the big problem is that it will be in Spanish. I am not able to make a podcast in English. It's too difficult for me. And I will make a podcast or a, like a talk, but about electronics in English, but it will be like a scripted podcast because otherwise it will be difficult for me. But for now, this will be the studio. I still have to make some sort of table in between. And this will be, let me sit it here. Please the camera here maybe. So this will be in the podcast. I'm not telling you the thematic, the theme of the podcast yet, but you will see it. And if you understand Spanish, Actually now YouTube already translates the videos automatically, but it's not the same. You will hear me with the voice of <laughs> some random guy. So yeah, this is now the studio. And here is my PC. I have a light there, which is usually turned off because it's too strong. As you can see, it makes you blind. But when I'll be here, maybe I'll leave it uh, turned on because a little bit far away. Now it's like I can change the color of the background. Blue. I just put it something like purple. Purple. Like the floor. Maybe this one. I can also change the color with the wheel. Maybe this one. Anyway. Hmm. The printer is now paused because it ran out of filament in the middle of the print. Anyway, I'll change it to a different uh, color. Doesn't matter. Okay, I've changed the spool the, from the Bamboo Lab printer. I just wanted to show you something interesting. These spools inside here, they have like an ID tag and that's how when you place it on the printer, it already knows what color and what type of filament it has. And since it has four, you can select from them very easily. And also very interesting is that I bought uh, some more filament and as you can see, it doesn't come with the spool because you can reuse this. It's pretty cool. It's a very solid spool. So all you have to do, you have here your instructions. <laughs> you have to get the tag ID here. Just make a zoom. This is the tag ID. You get it. You glue it here on the back. And then you take the entire spool of filament, open this and add it there. So instead of just shipping this, uh, the spool holder as well, they only ship you the filament. Pretty cool, it was pretty interesting to see that. I was wondering how uh, the machine knows when I place this that it is black PLA. How does it know? So yeah, it's because it has a tag ID there. They also send you the tag here because this was from a PLA color metal. You can just remove it and glue the new sticker with PETG. Pretty cool. Now I have a new spool. Part of the workshop update is also to show you what I received in my mail. And this is not a mail bag, but I just received this uh, for my walkie-talkie project. Remember, just open it. Remember that I had a problem with the signal because the ESP was inside of a case, so the Wi-Fi was, wi was blocked. So I bought a different ESP32 based on, um, it's the same ESP32 module, but it also has an external antenna. The connector goes right here, like that. And now I have the ESP on the inside of the case and this on the exterior and hopefully the range will be a lot better. So I'll make the second version of my project of the ESP32 walkie-talkie and let you know how it works. And for the same project of the walkie-talkie, I realized that the speakers that I've been using were very bad. So I bought these ones. These are a lot better. They are a little bit more expensive, not just 50 cents like the other ones, 
They have better magnet, better coil and better membrane. So in total it will make better sound. I've also realized that I have to change the case of the walkie talkies because the sound is created by the speaker but then is amplified and the resonance is affected by the, the case. That's why speakers have a wood case or even a concrete case some, sometimes to be, more hard, to be harder. So yeah, I'll redesign the case as well to make better sound. Don't know if I showed this during the project, but these walkie-talkies have a vibration module. It's just like a motor, but look how small it is. It already comes with this sticker here, so you just uh, take it out and you glue it on whatever you want to vibrate. Because these are walkie-talkies, but they can make calls. Not just like a regular walkie-talkie, because they are based on Wi-Fi and you can call, accept the call and so on. So it has here, on this hole, it has an RGB LED to light not to make light notifications but it also has this very tiny module that i found on aliexpress for vibration and it vibrates a lot so look how small it is if you want such a module for your projects i will try to let it, uh, place a link below the description you just glue it and then in this case you can see because it's on the other side of the pcb but it's controlled with a small bgd transistor but i think you could control directly with no, with the microcontroller might burn it out because it's a still a motor, so it will use uh, a, a lot more than just a few milliamps that the microcontroller could handle, so you have to use a BJT transistor to control it. And the last thing I wanted to show you that I received are this LoRa module. This will be the first time that I'm using this type of module. I've used LoRa module in the past, but not these ones. And I bought this especially for the uh, walkie-talkie project because I, wanted, I want to make it also long range, so I'll have to make tests to see if I can send the same package because sending audio it needs a lot of data but now with these modules. By the way to learn how to use audio with the ESP32 I've used this board here. I'll leave a link below and this has everything that you need for making tests with audio. It has an SD card module, an amplifier output, speaker output directly, it also has two microphones, the ESP32 here, a bunch of buttons so I think this is called ESP audio kit or some audio kit ESP32 version 2.2. So yeah, if you want to test it out and see how to work with audio with the ESP32, just buy one of these, make tests, and when you know how it works, as me, uh, you will just pass that to any other project with audio. And by the way, it comes with a library with a bunch of examples, how to place uh, sounds from a stream, from online, from a radio, SD card, a bunch of examples. So yeah. Do you know what this is? If you do know, maybe just pause the video and comment below before I tell you what this is, if you do know. And if you don't, just, well, let me tell you. Maybe even open it. Would you like me to open it? See what we have inside? Well, this is a very old electric meter or counter. This basically was measuring how much electricity your house was spending, was uh, wasting, in order for the electric company to bill you. This is the input and output, just one face. And this inside will spin and spin. And then you have some sort of counter. And the electric company would read this number and then bill you. Depending on how much kilowatt, uh, kilowatt you have been used. And <laughs> I had this with those very big ceramic fuses right below. And I know people that were placing some sort of magnets around here to stop this wheel from spinning and make the counter work uh, not work properly so basically cheating the electric company to build them less let me just open it for you and show you what we have inside i bought this from second hand but it still has the original seal as you can see made with lead i'll have to break it in order to open it there you have it i'm gonna be sincere with you i don't know how this works I, it should be very easy, a uh, quick search on Google will tell me for sure. But we have a transformer and then like a half transformer here on the bottom and the disc that spins in the middle. I'm guessing that involves the more power you use, more eddy currents maybe they are generating in the disc that make the disc spin to the right. I'm guessing that that's the idea. Or maybe the, the magnetic field in between the transformer and this other half transformer makes the disc spin because I can't see any other thing here. I'm not sure why we have this metal here. And the rest are just gears. Gears and numbers. Pretty easy, right? 
there's the input, there's the output. So the input here passes the transformer and then outputs. Who knows? <laughs> Such a simple design for merging the uh, used electricity. I just opened the other lid, which is also important to understand how it works. And I thought this side was the input and this was the output, but it's not like that. The input is brown, live wire and uh, blue with neutral. So as you can see here on this side, this is not the same connection. These two are for the input and this other one is for the output that goes to your home. So basically these two coils are the input and the output and this the same. So basically it passes through these coils and the more you waste, maybe the more power you waste, maybe the more it will uh, accelerate the disc. Not sure how that works, I should search it on Google. But it's important to see how the wires go. <laughs> so there you have it. Analog old electricity counter. Interesting, right? Well guys, I hope you like this update. Maybe you have learned something new. I hope that you like my new workshop, my new prototypes, the projects that I'm working on, and so on. And till the next video, keep up you guys.